Meet the Honeycuts from Arkadelphia, Ted, Cindy, and their four children. On this particular summer day, 17-year-old Trey was supposed to be working the family farm until an unexpected rain moved him back inside. Meanwhile, eight-year-old Grayson had asked their mom to work from home. So all three were unusually at home together. She just stopped talking to me. And uh, she just started breathing really weird and she wouldn't talk to me or Grayson. So that's when I called the ambulance. I do remember that call. I was sitting at the desk when it came in. I remember the uh, initial ambulance call and when the ambulance went out to pick her up, um, I heard that it was a cardiac arrest. Ambulance service? Yes, please. I need someone out here now. Where is here? 2086 Old Military Road. Please, I need an ambulance out here now. Uh, my mom is like, she's making these weird no breathing noises and she, she isn't like talking to me or anything. Mom! I got inside. She was dead sitting in a chair. When I got there, she's in the floor, bluing, non-responsive, no heartbeat. Her EMTs are doing CPR on her. She was gone. I mean, there, there wasn't any thinking. I mean, it was thinking, feeling. I, I mean, I knew she was, she had the, she had the look. I mean, eyes three quarter, dead stare, non-responsive, no movement. I mean, she was just, she was on the other side. We're gonna do everything we can, but we don't have an expectation that it's gonna work. They have no pulse when they get here, or we get a pulse back briefly after they get here, but it, by and large, uh, the vast majority of them uh, die. We were still doing CPR most of the way to the hospital, but we were starting to get uh, rhythms back on the heart monitor. A lot of times, even though they're intubated, if they haven't been down very long, and they'll start moving around, doing spontaneous respirations, and she wasn't really showing any of that. Running a, a code is probably one of the easiest things I do here. Talking to the family is much more difficult. Our old school counselor came by when she was at uh, Arkadelphia before they took her on the med flight. And uh, she told me that she'd come out there exactly the way God wanted her to. So I guess I just kept telling myself that. Especially looked at her husband and, and, uh, and her father and you know they were both looking at me and for any kind of, of a sign for how this was gonna turn out. Came to us and said, you know, we have, she has very little chance we think from our experience with this of ever surviving or if she does ever having any functioning life but dr jones at baptist has this new system and we think we can she's a good candidate for it it was just a couple of weeks earlier that dr david jones a cardiologist with baptist health in little rock had visited the team in arkadelphia explaining a new technology that might be useful to their critically ill patients therapeutic hypothermia most of the technology is on the other end at Little Rock. Uh, really all we had to do different was uh, just ice her down with ice packs, on the neck, under the arms, growing. Try to get her cool down initially. It is a small community here, so I knew her and her family was outside, so I really did not think. When we put on the helicopter, I didn't think it was going to be well at all. With the cooling process initiated, Baptist Health Med Flight quickly flew Cindy to Baptist Health Medical Center, Little Rock. We took her straight to the cath lab and opened up her um, one of her artery, heart arteries that was completely blocked as the cause for the whole event. Uh, then we brought her back to um, the the critical care or the coronary care unit and um, uh, did the hypothermia protocol for 24 hours. She was comatose throughout the the first 24 hours. Therapeutic hypothermia provides cooling and warming from a catheter inserted into the patient's vein. After a period of hypothermia, typically 12 to 24 hours, the system slowly and accurately rewarms the patient back to normal body temperature. Within 12 hours of rewarming, she began to wake up and, and really has done great. Within three hours of her starting warming up, we could tell she was there. I mean, she was responsive to our voices and still on a respirator, but you could tell she was she was coming back. She died in front of her uh, in front of her 17 year old son who called EMS. She was having a large heart attack at the time. That's what caused her to die. No pulse, no breathing. To me, that's dead. Honestly, thank you God. That's seriously that's what I said. It was like thank you God. 
And it's like, what you do, it does matter. I'm thankful for all the prayers that we got. and It's, it's a miracle. It really is. I'd like to thank our God and Lord Savior for, for saving her, you know, and sending her back. I mean, she was with him and he sent her back. That's the reason why, why I went into medicine. It's, it's truly it's so exciting to see a patient who is, uh, you take from the brink of death, you uh, stabilize them, you, you um, uh, take care of them for the first 24 hours, and then to see them wake up when they shouldn't wake up is uh, really exciting. My hat's off to uh, Dr. Jones for the program that he set up in Little Rock, and also to the, uh, the paramedics and the nurses that make my job pretty easy. All I had to do was say, let's, uh, let's ask her down and send her to Little Rock. And less than a week later, with her voice still recovering, Cindy was ready for discharge. I'm just so thankful to the group at Arkadelphia Baptist and up here in the cath lab and Dr. Jones. They have just truly been unbelievable. I don't know how you thank them for saving your life, but I'm going to try. And try she did by insisting on delivering flowers to some of her caregivers in Little Rock. She also later returned to the emergency department in Arkadelphia. I'm just so thankful for so many people who had a hand in, you know, saving my life. I mean, I think I was already kind of gone when yeah, I got yeah. here, and y'all y'all did a great job. So I'm eternally grateful to all of you. I really am. She's a miracle and just a product of everybody doing everything that we could. You remember the really good ones, you re remember the really bad ones. So, yeah, that's one I'll, I'll definitely recall. She basically got a new lease on life. She can go see her eight-year-old grow up and play baseball this summer. She can go back to work. She can um, see her daughter, who's 18, potentially maybe get married in the future. It's just really exciting to see uh, these, these lifetime events that she otherwise wouldn't have seen because she uh, had such a tragic event.